what you are looking at here, folks, is a video that I made in 2005. And you can see me there shoveling snow. You know what that means. When it's snowing, the video stores are busy. So, this was actually the last big snowstorm before I closed down in July of 2005. So, if you noticed, I have over a thousand hours of footage. And this is a good example right here. This is some of it. I have the snowstorms. The reason I had the footage because I have a camera. And there's two windows there, one in each window, infrared, and one's pointing one way, and the other's pointing the other way. So they're both on recording all the time until a videotape then. So of course I was recording this. I realized that when I start shoveling, it wasn't like I planned it. So later on as I looked at the tape, you know, I just put another tape in the machine and I marked it, you know. This was uh, February 24th, 2005. I mean, I guess we had a white Christmas. Because with all that snow, it was a lot. You can see it, how quick it's piling up. I'm shoveling horizontal, I guess you noticed that, instead of vertical, because for me to pile it in front of somebody's car, it's not, I'm not accomplishing anything, because they're just going to push it away anyway to get in the car. The sidewalks weren't too big, so I did, I did it horizontal. So I went from a couple doors the other way, all the way to the corner, because we're the second store in. The grocery store's on the corner, so... Now I'm pushing it in one big pile right to the very corner where it's not going to block in anything, it's not blocking a car, and it's right there where the, the, the gutter is, so I had a plan, you know. I've done this plenty of times, so I know. It's not bad enough I work about 12 hours a day every day, no days off, and all this besides, but this is important, you know. This is like one of the most important things, I know what it means. It means from doing 50 rentals to maybe two, 200 rentals. It's, it's a big difference. And, and everything in the store, all the movies were the same price. So we didn't care what they rented. So that was to, you know, because when it snows like that. Because the new releases are all going to go. And we had DVDs and all. Then, you know, but it's still, the business still slowed down starting 2005. If it wasn't for the snow, it would have been really, wouldn't be able to go. Yeah, I decided to, you know, take a break. And that's what I did, you know. I took my time. And I know I'm being recorded. I know the camera's recording it. For another thing about this, it's a surveillance camera, you know, infrared. Like, I'm out there, people say, you're out there by yourself at 1 o'clock in the morning doing that? Aren't you afraid somebody's going to bother you? I said, well... Uh, and nothing's happened so far. I mean, plus, I have it on if something would happen. Yeah, but they used to tell me the customers, you're outside there, and you have the stores open, anybody could grab you and go in the store and do whatever they want. I said, well, I still have it on tape, and they don't know how I have everything hooked up. So, yeah, I, I didn't think about it much then. Nowadays, I probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be doing this. But I'm out there like nothing, like it's a walk in the park, you know? Of course, doing this, I was just kind of messing around a little bit because I, it was at normal speed. I slowed it down. You know, when I played it back, just to give a little bit of effect there. Yeah, I shoveled a lot there, but by the time I got done, you know, and I threw salt and all, still was snowing a little bit the next day, but when the you know, it, it gets bright and all out. It, it, I had it pretty clear up there. I didn't block, block nobody's car in or nothing. So you can see it's the whole purpose of all this footage that I have. I'm going through it now, myself, a little bit. You know, that I already have done. I have footage of everything you could think of. There was two stores. A big store and this was a small store. I have footage of outside, inside. You know, transactions all day long opening the clothes of this other store and you know all these snowstorms and Christmas time. I have a lot of footage. And and since it's actual footage and all my tapes I mark them. They're, you know, they're marked. And sometimes I 
I put on the screen. You know the date. I, you know, sometimes on the camera, depending what it was, I would put it on the display. So these tapes are all pretty good. I mean, I know I can make a documentary out of it. It's just that now that so much time has passed, well, there's documentaries I looked it up. You know, on YouTube, you can look it up, and there is. A lot of them are short, and most of them are showing when the store closed down. The store closes down to newscasts. You know, it's on a newscast, and then they come out, and they videotape it. They talk to the owner, the manager, the employees, customers about the video store business. In this case, this is different. I'm showing the way it was. Because on the a lot of footage I have, people are walking in the store, they don't have cell phones. And the computer system we had was very, you know, very old. It just worked in the store. It wasn't connected to nothing. Only to each other. So, it shows a lot, you know. And plus, the way the store was set up, you know, we were pay on return. Most of the stores around there, you know, there's other stores around there. They were all prepay, give you a lot of days and all. They have drop-off box. We had none of that. People, you know, wanted to prepay a lot of times, and I don't want to do it because our system wasn't really set up for it. So what I did was, I would have a deal, you know, buy 10 rentals for $25. Actually save a couple bucks. But then when they came in, then they could just rent. And when they came back, they could drop it off. It wasn't much of a problem, but a little bit. Because if somebody kept the movie an extra day, it would charge them. So in other words, the first day is going to come up free. The next day would have been three dollars. He said, well, I don't know what I have. I got the rent. I said, yeah, but that, that free is not for us only for one day, so... Eh, not too much of a problem because what I did was if they had 10 rentals and they used two and it came back two days later I just took off two rentals so they still didn't have to pay you know but yeah, it was all right I had a lot of deals like that because when the DVDs came out a lot of people didn't have DVD players and they come there and they still rent movies and I say when I get a DVD player they were I know they were like we were charging like eighty nine dollars. Then I got a big deal later on. They were getting cheap, you know. The DVD players were big then. They were the size of a VCR. But then as they came down, I knew this one guy. He gave me a good deal. He had a lot of them, and he wanted to get rid of them. I, I I ended up getting a good deal from them on a whole bunch of them. So I decided to do a special. Buy a DVD player for twenty five dollars, which was a good price, because I wasn't really making anything on it and get 10 free rentals. Nobody did the deal. I wonder what the heck is going on. I have a big sign in the window. Nobody. And people ask me about it. So oh, that's not it. Oh, they paid $25 for a DVD player and then... So I changed it around. I said, buy 10 rentals for $25 and get a DVD player for free. Boy, oh boy. I, I had so many people coming in. And I even threw a free membership in. You see, ten dollars. I even threw that in. So the the people were for that. It's a di big difference. When the bus goes by there a couple times, one guy came in and I said, "I saw your sign. Is that really you're going to give him a DVD player for twenty five for free? And if I buy ten free rentals for twenty five, they said, "Yeah, you buy ten rentals for twenty five. I'm going to need ID and everything, and I'll give you a membership." And you'll, and you'll get the DVD player for free. He couldn't believe it. He's, he, he said, I pass by here every day. I don't live around here. He ended up being a really good customer. He was renting a lot of DVDs and all. So that's his example of just changing the wording, you know? From one way to another, I ended up doing good on that because I wouldn't care about the DVD players. This guy was glad. He had so many in the store, and a guy had a store downtown. And he gave them to me at a good price, and, I, and he had an account. And I gave him free rentals, because that's all I could get. Plus, you know, I must have got about 100 DVD players. You know, in, in about a couple months. I wasn't really made, but I was getting all these customers, you know, renting all these DVDs. Because if the DVDs sit in the store, the movies, we don't get nothing. So that's why I didn't care. They, they, I got that money back into the store. So we were, that was one of the things that helped out. Now if you notice here, I'm cleaning off a car, huh? 
Do you believe that? I don't have enough to do and I'm saying it's not my car. He says, I think it was a customer's car. I couldn't tell with all the snow on it because people park in front of the video store because they know I got cameras. I, don't know, I decided to do it because I figured there's so much snow, so let me get all that off. And then I'll be able to shovel it away anyway, so. Most people appreciate it because they come out and say, wow, no snow in front of my car, my car is cleaned off. And I've had a couple of problems with it though. One person came in and told me, don't, I don't like you to touch my car, don't be doing that, okay? Fine, if you don't want, I won't do it. He said, appreciating what I did, keep the snow away from the front of his car and off. No problem with it, but that's just one of the things that went on. I mention it because you probably wonder, you look at this footage and you see me cleaning up a car. You probably figure it's mine. No. I walk this to work every day. I didn't need a car. I didn't live too far from there. But I just did it. I don't know why. It was just like I actually felt like doing it. But I'm trying to keep all the snow. You know, while I'm out there, it's still snowing, but I didn't, I figured that while I'm there, I may as well do that because the snow wasn't going to be snowing. I think it was going to stop, like, overnight into the next day. So I figured the more I get done, then the next day, because I still go into work, because people are still going to be coming in, because we're open. So now, do you think I'm going to close when it snows? I don't even Christmas Day. A lot of times when it wasn't, the winter, like if the wind had been bad weather, I might have given a free day. So people would rent a lot of movies because it was a free day. Just to get more rentals, but... In this case, you know, White Christmas. I remember. Because it doesn't happen that often. It wasn't, you know, February is one of the months that you really get a lot of snow. Usually. And this was you know, Christmas Eve. I had already closed the store and I'm doing this. And, uh, it was really coming down. And, and I didn't, you know, when I went home, of course I was tired after all this. You know, the hours I put in. So, and, so you can see what I'm saying. This is a good example of this footage I have. Anybody knew this business, they know that the snow really meant that, uh, uh, to this kind of business. And hardware stores are busy, grocery stores and the video stores. And the food will be cleaned up. People act like they weren't going to ever get out again, but we know that that wasn't so. See, I had lights on the railing there, but I don't have the Christmas tree out. I might have some footage on here. When I had the Christmas tree, I'll see how, uh, how far I go with this footage. Because I'm just looking at it now. I haven't looked at it for a while, but I know what's going on. You can see this, this shoveling, you know, was... Well, I didn't know what to do about it. You know, I you know we, we, the corner, I figured, well, I just piled up. If I pile it in front of somebody's car, I could have put a pile right where those two cars are. But then you couldn't get between the cars and... I know not to throw it in the street. I used to do that sometimes. Knowing that they come in salt with the trucks and all. But that's a small street. So I don't want to get into any problems with anything. Because I know about it. Because uh, I've shoveled a lot of snow. No, this is nothing. What do you think happened? When I get done, I go home and have to shovel in front of my house. To, 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 so I can even get in there. Now see that camera? See that's moving. See it? I had it on a sort of a sensor. I mounted on one of those that run by battery. That, see that when that, that car came by, it activated it. Actually, I, I did a lot of things for the video store. I was know everything about video, you know? Because I actually had a small camera. A little one, you know, that I got. I had all kinds of cameras. And I had bought one of those, they looked like a phony camera. You put them up and they move back and forth, but it's not a camera at all. It's a dummy one. And I used that and I put a real camera on it and you saw what just happened. It was activated, you know, by light or movement. It didn't get activated when I was out there, but it did when the light hit it. When a truck came by there or whatever it was, so. But all kind of things there, you know, video store, video cameras, video surveillance, whatever you want to call it. I had cameras everywhere. I had cameras in the backyard. 
I had cameras in the, of course, in the store. I had cameras sitting up in the ceiling, you know, on, on the, in the ATM machine. I have everything you could think. Two cameras in the window. Yeah. And, you know, it wasn't like it is today. Everybody's got cameras on their phones now. It's nothing. And the city has cameras all over. And stuff happens. But in this case, I, you know, if anything happened, I had it, I had it on, I had it on tape. Because I used to keep the tapes sometimes. It all depends. If I needed a blank tape. But a lot of times I would just keep them in Mark Snowstorm. Like these I kept. Because I had them in the window and it's being recorded. There's a lot of footage, you know, uh, that I have. Just, just on this. From the, you know, for a few years. Most of my footage is from... Around 2000. I have some, I have some footage back to 1991. I don't know how I have it. It's just something I was doing because... Back in the day, we were we were renting cameras, them big ones, the camcorders. That's the reason why I had it, because I used one of them over the counter. You know, and if it wasn't rented, I used it. It's, you could put a big tape in it. Well, I can say I'm doing all this now. I'm watching it like you're watching it. And it's, it's, like I said, the snow. That's like, you know, a big thing for the video stores. Not just us, all of them. But we had a different system. We didn't have any drop-off box or nothing. So, we wanted to pay on return and that was it. We kept it simple. The movies were all the same price. Didn't matter. New releases, stock films, everything was the same. The hours were the same. 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. We even had a matinee special. We rent a movie. You know, when we open and get it back before 5, it was that close. A lot of people took advantage of it, you know, that could do it. There's a lot of stuff going out right now. I'd like to get someone to partner with me. Maybe we could work something out and get, make a documentary. I mean, if we could just make something like what I'm doing here, you know, and maybe get it to a company, somebody that might want to produce it, you know, and do it. Because I have enough footage. And in the way I'm talking over it now, anybody could talk over it. You have to make a script. I, I, I don't need a script because I lived it. So I, I can say what, you know, the way it was. And I can go over a lot of things here, even like just looking at a snowstorm. And so you saw what just happened. I'm talking to you about this and I still, I was shoveling the snow at the same time, you know. And you can see it, you know. It wasn't sticking. You know, where I couldn't shovel it because it was one of them dry snows, powdery. Because when people start walking on it, then it gets harder to shovel. It was kind of empty. It wasn't a wet snow. Like, you know, every snowstorm's a little different. This one was one of those that was cold out, like in the 20s. So it was perfect for this kind of snow, powdery. You can probably see it there coming down. It's, you can, well, you can tell, I, in the car, by the time the car is gonna have the snow back on it, but. Yeah, I was concerned. I mean, the, the sidewalk is small there. There's not much room. I mean, I'm going to pile the snow in where this, the railing is. See, the view changed now because the camera moved by itself. See it? You can see the whole car now. Yeah, I, I remember I put that. I used it, you know. Instead of just mounting it, it has a red light and make it look like a real camera. I put a real camera on the front of it. It works. So I don't think that, that camera has sound. So of course I put a little bit of music. I can talk over and do what I want once I have. I didn't care about the sound. A lot of the videos that I made, I did talk over when I was making them. Sometimes I took the sound off and plugged in a microphone and talked over here. And I don't have to do that because I'm using the front facing camera on my tablet and it's picking up me talking. You probably can hear the music in the background. So it was, I was busy with all this. I mean, just doing all these videos I was making. Because I'm in all of them. Because I'm the one filming them. So this over a thousand hours of footage I have. The reason why I say a thousand hours is because there's six hours on the tape. And you know, on a lot of the tapes you figure it out. Well, it's open like 11 hours a day. And a lot of times I would have a tape for the daytime and a tape for night so you can figure how many tapes i would have 
just to do uh, one week. I kept, I start keeping them, <clears throat> only because I, I, you know, have plenty of blanks, you know. By putting six hours, well, I didn't use as many tapes. If I put it on to two hours speed, it's only two hours when you can have six. The movies that we rented, they were on the two hours speed. Because the companies knew that they wouldn't track to the VCRs. You know, on everybody's machine, you're going to have a lot of problems. You rent them out. So it doesn't track on my machine, but on the two-hour speed it did, because that six-hour speed was slow, very slow. If you paused it, it was clear. But they came up with a lot of things with the VCRs. You know. That even with the the two-hour speed, if you paused it with a forehead machine, it would still be clear. And it's, there was a lot of things that really that I knew, you know that happened, you know, in the course of the business. I have one incident there in the, in the bigger store. I'm going to bring back a, a, a return to tape. I say $6. I said, well, she didn't care about the price. My son ran it and I found it laying in there and I said, I better bring it back. I looked at the tape. I said, well, the tape has got, he, he put a piece of masking tape on the end. She said, so what? She doesn't know nothing. I said, wait a minute. He, he, I think he recorded on our tape. So I put it in and it had wrestling or something. He had to use it for a blind tape. Because, you know, when we get to movies, that knockout, there's a knockout clip on the end, left-hand corner, so it can't be recorded on. He puts a piece of tape over it to reuse it as a blank. I guess he just grabbed it, didn't look at it. It was wrestling. I said, he ruined our tape now. He saw it. I said, you know that's not what it says on the thing. I said, I'm very sorry, but I'll have to tell him about it. You know, I would charge you for this tape because we pay a lot of money for these new releases. He recorded on it. So what I did, I looked up the rentals on that tape. And I said to her, look, I'm going to have to charge you based on the fact it's a new release. But I would have got rentals on it, you know, and would have still continued to get rentals. So I think I ended up charging her about $20. And I gave her a receipt. I said, look, I have to do it. I'm going to have to close your account. He's not going to be able to rent it. And she said, I don't rent tapes myself. But she, she wasn't too upset when I showed her. I said, you know that that's, that's not our movie. And she saw the box and said, look at it. She understood because she said, my son is not too bright, you know. And she said, don't worry, I, I'll pay for it. But he's going to pay for it because I'll take it out of his allowance. So she didn't care about paying for it. I said, everything's all right. You may as well keep the tape now. I mean, you're paying for it. Because I based it on the tape was... Probably, I think I paid $75, but I got a lot of rentals on it. Because I'm getting 20, 20, say $26 back, so I kind of did all right on it, you know? You have a lot of copies of a tape. Now, if that was the only one, I would have been even more upset because I can't replace it that easy. So she understood everything, and we had a good talk. She said, don't worry, I want to tell him, he better watch what he's doing. So, that worked out all right, you know? But it's happened. Those things happen, but I'm aware of all that. You know, I look for that because it, it was a giveaway. A piece of masking tape, it showed up right away. You know, masking tape is like, like a beige color. I saw it on the end of the tape. But I, uh, I knew right away when I saw it what happened. So that's just an instance with tapes, you know. That's why DVDs, you know, you can record on DVDs, but you can't really record on them once, they, you know, once they're made. You know, from the factory, that's it. They can be scratched and all that, but DVDs were nice to deal with, you know. They're light, easy to, to handle, you know. And tapes, I was glad to see the tapes starting to go out, because that was one of the problems. And then they're coming out with, uh, a lot of people would rent the tapes and they would copy them. A lot of the tapes had copy guards. You could copy a tape and play it back, it might be alright. But if you, if you went to copy it, somebody else, it would still have the copy going on. I don't know how it was encoded, you know. They didn't do it on the, the new releases because, you know, it, it's costly. They're paying a lot of money for those, those new releases. Anywhere from about 50 to $70. Imagine for one movie <clears throat> and just a, a, v, a VHS tape. 
But we're getting money. We're we're getting money off of that. You know, you run a tape ten times. That's that's thirty dollars right there. And those new releases ran it. Plus, we were getting the new releases before cable. That's what was helping. We would get them like 30, 30 days before cable. So we, that was helping us. The DVDs helped us. Because once that came out, everybody's new. You know, everybody's running the DVDs. So, you know, there's DVD players and, and well, now the DVD recorders were starting to come out. But I don't think then, I didn't think there was many of them. So now you can still get now. I think they stopped making VCRs now. There's still some around. You know, you can get it on Amazon and all that. You, you, I looked it up already. They're actually getting more money for the, the VCRs now than they did when they were newer. But now with the DVD player and the VCR together, you could copy off the tapes and put it on DVD. Because that's what I did. On some of the tapes. Not that many of all the tapes I have. I'm just starting to look at them now. They're all marked anyway. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. If someone, you know, wants to do this deal and do a documentary, of course, you can have all the tapes. I think if uh, I would get a company to do it, you know, to sell the, the rights to do it, you know, with this footage I have. This is authentic footage. This is not something that you can make up, you know. I didn't do this now. I didn't get a snowstorm and record it and say I did it, you know, it's from 2005, you know. First of all, that, that store's not there anymore. Neither is the other one. I couldn't have recreated it now, anyway. It's just not there. This townhouse is where we had the big store, and right here is an apartment where this store so. so this is definitely authentic. It's not, well, I'm in it besides. So, you know, this is, uh, let's see, this is 2005. This is almost 14 years ago. So, you, you know, in that time period, a lot of things have changed, you know. Right now, I, that's why I came up with all this. I figured, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this. It's a shame. I see myself, what I did back in the day. Yeah, and I'm still alive to see it, you know, no how I, the work I did, just shoveling. It kept me in shape, I guess. You know, see it? You see, I, I, you know, I got ahead of it, even though it's still snowing there. Once I got ahead of it, and I put some salt. It wasn't too bad. I'm just going to let it alone, and then people start walking on it in the morning. You know what happens. It's packed down and gold out as it is. Oh, you're chopping out there and all, and it's dangerous because it's in front of a business. I don't want any problems with this. If anything would have happened, somebody would fall. The landlord would really have a fit because he'd get sued. And he'd blame us because he keeps that clean. You know, I, I know that. More than ever because it's a business. I hate to see that we had to, you know, when I had to close down because to find a store like that, you know, it's in a residential area but it's zoned for commercial. I mean, that arrangement was probably to do that back when they did it, was probably really involved. You know, with the ordinances and the variations and all that they have, the variances, you know, they have a... People are living above the video store, right? They have their own entrance. And it's a commercial business downstairs. I know for him to rent it, make it to apartment was nothing. But to do it the other way around, it's, it's more difficult, I'm sure. Say, uh... You've got a building there and you want to have a store down below and you have the apartment upstairs. It's going to be more involved to get that zone, you know, for business because with people living above there, it has to be a business that isn't making a lot of noise or anything, you know. There's got to be a lot of uh, concerns there, so in this case, it was nothing for him. The landlord knew he wasn't getting that much rent from us. He got much more rent from when he rented it to a tenant than he did from us. So he just ripped everything out, made it to an apartment. First floor apartment. We were paying only, uh, like, I think 700 or something. I was paying more for my apartment than I was for the rent of the video store. And he, I think he ended up getting like $1,200 for that, that apartment. He wasn't going to get it from us, because he knew that we weren't doing much business. 
So it was a lot of things to be involved there. That's what really made my decision to have to close it down because it was just too slow. If I was going to get another lease and, and, and pay more money, it wasn't it wasn't going to work out. So I just had to close it down. It's a shame, but it was a nice little store to have. You know, you've probably seen some of the video I've been putting posting. You know, I'm trying to do is post a lot of this. So maybe someone will think about it. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's an opportunity. I have the product, my ex expertise and experience and all about the video store business, you know. And a lot of people today don't even know what it was like. People in their 20s today never rented a movie. Chances are, unless they were kids and they were still to find a video store. So the people who had, uh, have experienced it know what it was like. It was, a, it was a fun thing then, back in the day. People like to go out, get movies, it was, you know, the new releases are coming out, you know, we're coming out pretty quick on video, you know, the movies, to be in a theater, and be on video, before you know it. So a lot of people that couldn't get to the movies, and all really like to go home, and be able to look at a movie, and, and plus go out, and it was a thing then. Now, of course, there's so many ways to, to get movies, and all streaming, and everything else, on your phone and computers, it's, it's, the technology today is really something. There's cameras on the phones and all now, and now there's three cameras on the phone. You have one, now it's three. They keep coming out with stuff like here, I'm going real slow. I'm not talking slow, but I was walking slow there. And you can see how uh, I keep at it, I mean, at the time, you know, I'm all bundled up there and doing all that and this is not this is not one time this is over the years i did a lot because the snow is a you can see see how much there you can still see a little bit it was, it was getting it but not much you know it went, since i've been shoveling that's how much accumulated just in the time i've been talking here yeah it was it was something you know and, and i know all the things of it one thing about the store I caught mom and pop. Wasn't too many locations, you know. And I used to know how it was, you know. But it was you, you know. I was used to it. It was a routine. It was for me. It was normal, you know. I had my my dream job, you know. For me, I didn't mind putting all the hours in because, uh, like people say, oh, you're lu you're lucky. You don't to pay for the rentals, plus you're getting paid to look at movies. I said, well. Um, I'm not, I'm getting paid to do all the work I do, I'm by myself, remember. I'm cleaning the store, painting the store, putting posters, some more work than what the business was, you know, because I wasn't waiting on a lot of customers. And even when it snowed like this, what do you think? I probably didn't wait on many more customers. But the problem was they're renting a lot of movies. A lot of customers rent anywhere from four to six movies. Now you know yourself. They just say it averaged to four per person. So I did a, a hundred rounds. That, that would be four hundred rounds. Normally I was doing about fifty rounds. So it was like about two hundred when it snowed like this. So it it was like four movies per person. Plus it stopped right away. As soon as the snow cleared up and all, so that was it. It went from all those rounds back down. I mean a lot of returns came in. Usually a couple of days to get all the returns back. A lot of people would keep them because they want to look at them. They paid the movie, you know, for the late. So, yeah, it's a whole thing. I, you know, I, like I said we had the one store, big store. I, well, I showed some of the video already. Very big. This is like, just two of these stores could fit inside of that one store. We well, had to move from there. It wasn't because of, in 2001 because of, they were going to build the townhouses. And then I found this store over here, not too far away. That's my block. I don't know how I found something like that. It was, it was, at the time, you know. We just moved over there, and the people, we rented the movies in the big store. We gave them a free day. That free day, we was moving everything and hooking up the computer. And they returned it. They returned it over there. Yeah, it was, uh, when we first started, it was, it was good because it was busy. Because by doing that, by giving that free day, that made it busy. We was getting a lot of rounds. 
So when they returned, it was, it was busy, you know, but the place wasn't fixed up yet. It took me a while. But it was enough to, to try to fit all their movies <coughs> from that big store into that little store. Because we usually had the empty box on the shelf and the movies behind the counter. So the, the box on the shelf were alphabetized and the boxes on the shelf were numerical. So what I had to do there, as much as I didn't like it, was on the sections like comedy and drama and all that. In order to make more space, I put the tape behind the box. So that everything fitted. Now all I had behind the counter was basically the new releases. So and there were when you came in the door, all the new releases, the boxes. So it kind of worked out all right because you started showing some of the video. I showed inside a lot and, and outside. I'm only showing this now because it's a big part of the video strip business with these snowstorms. It's letting me be able to talk over it besides. So right now, I'm still out there. I mean, I'd rather be sitting here looking at this and talking over it than out there in the snow. Look at that. Cleaning the car, huh? See, that's where the problem was. That I'm, you know, I can, the wiper, you know, a lot of people will leave their wipers up, like, stick out. You know, I'm shoveling in this guy's car. He didn't say nothing about it. I knew about it. You know, I know about the wipers and all. And I even went out in the street a little bit. But you can see me in the left hand corner there. I don't know what I was doing that for. I think I was trying to shovel the snow between the cars. I was trying to shovel a little bit out in the street. I, I know not to do that. Because when you do that, you create a problem because it. You're plowing the street and you're throwing the snow back out in the street. They can find you for that. I didn't want to get in any trouble. I get in trouble too easy, so I, I shouldn't even have been doing that. Seeing somebody's car off because uh, instead of thanking me, they didn't tell me I, not to do it, you know. So, I just did it. I don't know. I was out there and I figured, well, I was in no hurry then. I should have been. If it was like... I close the store from 10 o'clock. Time I do all my work, 11. This is like about 1 o'clock in the morning. Because when, when, with all the... You can see me out in the street. I don't know why I even did that. I guess I'm trying to keep the snow away from the store as much as I can. But that's why these tapes is amazing. You know, when you look at them, you know. And to think of all that footage I have. I don't know how, you know, somebody can help me with it. I, you know, have been making all these posts and I've been writing all this stuff down. And I've been saying if someone wants to take this footage I've been posting like this and maybe put it together and make sort of a, dem a demo of it, a sample, and send it to these companies if anybody wants to do a documentary based on, you know, because they can do all the talk over they want. They can compare with the other stores, you know, get footage from some other stores. And because this was different because of the fact that, like I said, it was pay and return. You know. and it, was, it was back in the day when it was really busy, you know. And I, and I had that actual footage, you know, that they can use if they know how to put it together. Because, I mean, I could myself in a way, like, like what I've been doing, is inside and outside then I have a Christmas time a lot of footage then the snowstorms and, and I have a lot of like I know I have like about one almost one whole month like in 1997 where I have from open and close for that whole month and you know no two days are exactly the same but to go through that I've been going through some that I already had looked at before and marked it I mean, I know it could be uploaded in the computer, you know, filter or whatever it is. You know, there's a device that can do all that. It could be filed in the computer, but since I have everything dated, it could be put in by date. But then I think to do all that, now to a company that is set up, you know, to do that, they they could do it, and then from that they can make the documentary because they can punch up the different themes. I to do it, but I know PBS, they do a lot of documentaries, and they like to have a documentary that nobody has, you know? 
Like this would be different. Because nobody would have this. They'd have exclusive rights to it. And they like that because people will buy it. And it's like for the donation. That, that, that way it's a good item to have. And they would keep promoting it. They would keep selling it. So they might be interested. You know in something like this. There's a lot of deals could be worked out. And I know YouTube. But now there's YouTube TV. They may be looking for something like that since they're just starting out in the TV business. All these companies, that's what they're doing now with the streaming and all. So they might be interested in doing it. Because these companies, it's, it's nothing for them. They're big companies and they, they can afford it, you know. I mean, I could make a deal with someone. If that's what I said, a partner with me, someone's got an opportunity. Because I'm giving them an opportunity to make money even though I, I'd rather live with somebody they get nothing 50% is better than nothing so if, if somebody can just looking at all this they might think that they can put it together maybe sell it to a company and we could split you know 50 50 or maybe they you, you don't want to sell it you don't want to lose the rights so maybe we can work a deal with a company with just a cash advance they won't have to pay too much and then we, they would get that money back once it comes out and they start making money off of it. You know how they make money. Because if they do a documentary and they sell all that commercial time, just that alone. And every time that that, that documentary is played on all the networks and across the country, how much money's coming back in royalties? Say that the, that documentary, say some of that footage was used in a commercial. There's a lot of money could be made off of it. So I think we would be better to make a deal with a company but just give us a cash advance and then we would get royalties later on you know whenever whatever happened with it I don't know whatever deal could be made I know there's a lot of possibilities I'm giving doing this because I was in it for so long you know the business and now I'm not and I'm retired and I thought it was a good thing to work on because it's like over 30 years from the time I started you know in, in the video business I started in right around 1988. Of course, it's 30 years, but I haven't been doing it now for... This, this is already, what, 2005. It's already 14 years. 14 years. Right there. So, it, this just nothing been going on with the video, I think. There might be one video store maybe still around in the whole country, maybe. But it, it may as well say it's gone. It's just... Video stores are dead. I have a lot of ideas for the video store too. You know that, that I've been working on. You know, looking at this footage gives me you know ideas. That's why I thought about a documentary. You can look it up on YouTube because they have so many videos on everything, and there is. There's a, on a video store. It, it it just tells about it and interview people and all. But not in any footage like this. Because here, the footage that I have, like the snowstorms, could be, you know, put together. I mean, there's ways that, with the footage I have. You could take this footage and then show people come. So I have people coming in and out of this store here. You know, when it was snowing, I have that. The only reason I have it, because see, I'm out there, and this camera's running all the time. And when people are coming in and out of the store, I have the footage because I already had it because I kept it. It was a surveillance tape, and I would mark because it was snowstorm, so I marked it. And it could be put together to show, you know, how how it's evolved. You know, look at that. And I could have used a, a plow, huh? I'm the human plow. A couple of people used to call me plow boy. I told them me. You, you should be calling yourself. You should be shoveling the snow instead of me. You know, the customers, you know, I living in that neighborhood and I knew everybody because of the video store. That's what I missed the most, that interaction with all the people. And that was like one of the things, you know. We had a lot of things there. A lot of people, you know, they needed help. Like say the VCR is not working. I told them bring it in. We, we had a service for that. They bring it in, there's no charge for a free estimate. And then there's the contact if you want it done. And it was a tune-up special, I think it was like 1995. 
I can bring it in and you know change the belt and clean it and all. A lot of people like that. When cable came out, a lot of people wanted to copy off the cable. And they didn't know how to do it. I knew how to do it, but because the cable companies wouldn't hook it up that way. They hook it up to the cable box and all. And, and if you want to hook it to the VCR and then back out. From the, from the cable box instead of going to the TV you go into the VCR and then to the TV but you gotta watch out for the way you hook up the stuff because you can create a, an interference like you actually create like a copy guard if you don't know how to do it so I obviously did that for a lot of people help them out you know I wasn't busy enough but you know a lot of times I would tell them look bring it in and I'll hook it up here and I'll show you how to do it because I had cable in the store Mostly for the news and the weather and all, sports. So I had that too. So I would show a lot of people how to hook it up. And they appreciate it, you know, because I said, well, I shouldn't be doing it because now you're going to be looking at the stuff on the cable and recording, you won't be getting movies. But I still did it. Just to help people, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff and then they do with the video store and the video surveillance video video that's all I, I knew everything about video like these cameras here like you know what you're looking at here I think it was in 2003 you now the grocery store next door got robbed would you believe it I had it on video tape yep you probably say how can that be like what you're looking at here right this guy walks by the store and I saw, yeah, I saw him, but it's being recorded. And then he walks back again, and he crosses across the street to the laundromat. And then he goes into the grocery store and robs it. At gunpoint, the owner was in with me when this was happening. Because the son was over there working the store, wasn't busy. He saw it, he ran out. But the guy got away, he got in his car and chased him, you know. But I had the actual footage of all that, and I had this guy on on tape I had his face and slowed it down like I did here and I, I gave it to the detectives and all and I, I think they caught him this was well it was at Christmas time too I think it was in December 2003 that was like before this I mean things did happen you know but having that for that guy he didn't know nothing he walked right by the video store there went straight up the street came back crossed over you know, he had a gun and all. He was only, he looked like a young guy. And this able son's in the, in the grocery store. And he saw the kid in there by himself. He put a gun right to his head. And for money. The thing's only $60. See, all that for... Now you could, you know, your money or your life, huh? Nowadays, they don't care about it. If, if you give them the money, they, they shoot you. Back in there, not too much of that, but now, like when I was out there a lot in front of the store and all at night by myself, I used to leave the camera and walk away and come back. But nothing happened. I wouldn't think about it now. I don't think I would do it now. I mean, I know I had the cameras running, I was going to record what happened, but it still was kind of dangerous to do all that. I, you know, I did a lot of that back in the day. And like I said, if anybody wants to partner with me, everybody knows about me because I'm doing all this discussion about about this video store a lot. I've been putting it, I've been posting a lot of this on, on social media to see if anybody would. I only need one person that's kind of has some time. I'm not going to be involved. I, I decided a way to do it since I'm put, kind of post a lot. I'm going to try to post a lot of these with me talking over like this. And, and leave the snowstorm. I mean, it's a good one for me to talk over. Because you can see what, what I did. It just shows how it was. So it gives me credibility because I'm the one that videotaped this. And I'm the one talking over it now. So I, I know how it was. And like I said, I think it, it can be done, you know. It's just, Gotta come up with like an angle, some kind of gimmick, you know? I think the gimmick is to take this footage that there's so much of it and try to make it into a story, like in a sense. You know, show open when I open a store sometime and then show us like 
a snowstorm like I'm showing here. I do have some footage where this particular store, people are coming in and out. It's not too busy. And, and I'm shoveling the snow and I'm running back in to wait on the customers. And so there's a lot of stuff that I think somebody can put it together in such a way and then with music and voiceover, maybe get some interviews with some people, you know, in the neighborhood about it, you know, wherever they, you know, want to do it. But I think it, it, it can be done. I mean, with companies that want to invest in something like this, I mean, plus the footage itself can be, you know, it's kind of a, a collector's item in a sense. Because it's just something that nobody has. I mean, I'm sure some of those videos might have had some footage, but I don't think nothing like this. This is like a lot, you know, a lot could, could come from it. And I hate to see it just sit there on my shelves, all these tapes, I still have them. And kind of do something with them. I mean, I'm just showing here. Most of this was, it's just snow, it's not too much here to show. But I, I've already showed inside the both locations. This, this I wanted to do, I wanted to talk over it. And I think uh, maybe by me doing this, we'll pay more attention because I write a lot of stuff. You know, in the description, I don't know if a lot of people understand it, you know. It's easier for me to explain it like this. Okay, so somebody wants to be a a partner with me to do this. It's not much involved. I have my email address, which I can be contacted by email. And all this, a lot of stuff I posted. So someone could take it and they could upload it to maybe companies looking to, to do a documentary. I mean, if somebody out there can do the documentary and come up with it and make a real good presentation, well, maybe you could you could sell that as is. Oh, look at this. Can you believe this? I'm talking about somebody bothering me. Look at this. I know this guy, but just to show you what can happen, you know. Luckily, I know him. He wants to shovel the snow after I already did all the work. I don't need you now. He's he's looking at you know. He told me if he want me to come around. I mean, I, I don't. I know him, and he's helped me a little bit from time to time, you know. And now that I did all this, and he's looking, what he really did a lot of work. I said, yeah, I can depend on you. And I told him, that if you can come, maybe tomorrow, come around. I'll give you a few dollars. You know, and you can do me. He actually did come the next day. And I really had everything pretty clean. I said, if you just want to keep like the steps is the problem when the door opens you can't have any snow there that you won't be able to open the door so we kind of came back and i told him look you know what i don't need you now i'm surprised to see him come but he's around one of the neighborhood people you know fortunately i know him and all he's not like somebody i didn't when he come around and, and it just shows you the fact i had that recorded when that happened that's why when i'm going through these tapes now I wouldn't know where that was, you know. I wouldn't know where that was on the tape. I might not see the mark, something like that, that maybe could be used to show what could happen if you're not careful out there, you know. Compared to the way things are today, you know, there's cameras everywhere. The city has cameras all over, and people have their doorbell cameras and their cell phone cameras and all iPhones and all that. So when stuff happens, you notice it's already, you know, it gets recorded a lot. Of everything that's going on, you know. But then it wasn't. I was one of those people. You talk about selfies. I was doing selfies before the that word even came into existence. Because in the video store back in the day, I'm I, I'm I'm videotaping myself. I had a camera set up. I'm walking in front of the camera. That's sort of a selfie. And this is, is what do you think this is? It's of myself, isn't it? You know that guy, see, he left, no problem. In a way, I'm glad to see somebody I know, you know. Because at least if, you know, he's around, you know. Like he told me, you know, I'm going to keep an eye, don't worry, I'll keep an eye on if anybody bothers you, you know. I appreciate it, I, I would give him a few rounds, a few bucks, you know, help him out. You know, because that shows you what, when you know, you know, your territory, you know, I know what I'm doing. If I knew him, I mean, if he... So, I mean, he's coming around once. He never bothered too much, though, you know. He wasn't kind of, like, pushy, you know, insistent. So, I would give him something sometime by him. 
I was on dinner or something. I said, here, you want to... It was cold out or something. Help me out. I said, here, I'll, I, from the restaurant, I will order him a burger and fries or something, you know. Help him out. And it was good for him and good for me, so... Because I'm working by myself, you know. I, I, I couldn't take advantage of any help I could get. I mean, I did all this. See, the problem with this, if I wanted him to do it, I can't leave him there by and I have to watch him. He's not going to do it the way I want it. Now you can see what happened. The car that I kind of cleaned off has got all snow on it. So you see, it didn't phase me a bit because I know, I know the guy. So I said, at least I knew at that point. He said, I'm going to be around and I hear walking. You know what I said? Because he would, you know, he would shovel people's cars out. And, oh, you know, it was good to have somebody around like that. You know, fix flat tires. He, you know, he was good at doing it, you know. For him, it was just some extra money. That's all he didn't need much, you know, so. But that shows you what can happen if you're not careful. You know, me being out there like that. Anybody figures he's allowed to have money in the store, all the movies and all the things and equipment in there that they could take, you know. Plus video games and all. I'm giving you a little slow motion here, look. Yeah, I did that after I recorded it. And I put the music and I kind of slowed it down just to see, you know. I figured I'll slow it down. But that's something that can be done. You can make another video too, you know. A lot of things can be done, especially with all the effects they have nowadays. These, these, these well, you wouldn't want to colorize this because it's black and white. You wouldn't need to because there's no, really no color. But I mean, I know that the tapes and all, they can be enhanced. You know, it can all be done put through the computer and all. So I don't know, you know, if this is a, a good idea, a good project. I wish somebody out there that listens to, you know, what I, you know, have been viewing some of my footage would, you know, kind of just drop me a, a line or something, you know, on the social media. Because I, I know, I don't care how many people email me. It doesn't bother me because I get a lot of emails anyway all the time. Look at this. It's like I'm looking in the mirror, huh? I'm giving, I'm posing in front of the camera. See, so you know I'm aware of the camera. But at the time, I didn't really think I'd be looking at this, you know. Fourteen years later, I never thought I'd be looking at it, you know. I just did it at the time, you know. Well, I did it, but then I, I slowed it down, you know. When I, yeah, but I'm just showing what can be done. If I'd done this, you know, when I recorded this, look, if I did this, so that can also be, things like that can be done, you know, in making of a documentary. I mean, it could be one documentary done just about the Christmas time at the video store with all the, the footage I have about that. could be another documentary about all the snowstorms, a documentary about the counter, the way it looked, the way the people were then, the way they didn't have cell phones, you know, it could be a lot of different parts of the documentary but again I'm still I haven't been hearing from it but lately I've been trying to post as much of this stuff as I can because maybe someone might just be interested in I, I already gave I came up with the conclusion that the better for someone to get this footage that I've been posting it's already out there they can take it and they can save it or I can send it, I can upload it to them. No, I can send it by email. Like all this footage I've been putting on YouTube and Twitter, I can email it to them. You know, I have it, so I can email it. When it says share it, you can email it or you can go to Twitter or whatever. So uh, I could send it. I know I have put on Christmas 2001, Christmas 2002, Christmas 2003, Christmas 2004. I've already got them out there lately, all that footage. Now this, because of the snowstorm, I decided that I could talk over it, you know. So, you know, when I finally decide to cut this off, I, I can't say I'm tired. If I wasn't tired shoveling, I shouldn't be tired sitting here looking at it and discussing it, but you know how things are, you know. You play. Yeah, this is something, you know. When I was doing it, I wasn't thinking too much of it. I knew it was better for me to do it then 
And when I come back the next day, because I come in the morning and I could be tired, at least I could come in, yeah, at the last minute knowing I got everything pretty well cleared away there. I kind of have to. It did snow all night until the next day. Because I, I piled it up so much, I mean, and plus I throw salt here too, you know. I know, I think a couple of times I made a brine, you know, with salt and water and I crushed it all on the sidewalk, but I didn't know how that was going to work out. I have it on one of the tapes. I think I've already put it out there already. I mean, this, this is stuff that people are looking at that they didn't know about. And I get a lot of views, I mean, on this stuff. It's not something that I made up now. I mean, it's, 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 I have the footage. I have a lot of it, you know. And these tapes, they go through them six hours on the tape. I know the snowstorms, you know, I, I could pick out like I did here, just play it. Like, I didn't know that, I knew that people talked to me once in a while. Not too many times when I was out there. I remember that that guy did, but I wouldn't have known what tape until now that I'm playing it, you know, that I recorded it and I played it, and I saw that. Not too much is going on other than me shoveling the snow. That's uh, not too uh, exciting, I guess. But what I might be, what I have to say here might be. Again, I, I you know, like someone to try to at least just contact me. You don't have to to do a deal, maybe you have an idea. And if anybody knows someone that, like, kind of, like, I guess you could say, uh, techie, like, you know, that with this computers and all, and I had to do all this, and they might have the equipment, and that has the VCR, play it into a device, and it matches it up, I guess, to the computer. That's what the part of the problem here is. The sound is all right. But when I'm copying on the front-facing camera, I'm copying it off of a little screen. And I'm playing the DVD. But because of the lighting, the lighting's causing it not to come out as good. Sometimes when I play it back, it looks better than it's looking now that I'm looking at it. This is, you know, the way I've been doing this, you know. So it's, a, it's something, you know, that I, I just got into it now lately, you know, since I have the time. I'm getting older now, I and mean, this was when I was a little bit younger. And I'm doing all that now. I don't, I don't shovel snow like I did. I, I was still shoveling snow, even though I wasn't doing it you know, at the video store in my neighborhood. I was doing it. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. The tapes play all right. I mean, once the signal's on there, they're. So far, I haven't had any problems. Remember, it's been, it's been quite a while. But I know how to store them. You know, store them a certain way. You know, on the one side, you know how all the tapes on one side, but if you store it where so it doesn't sag, I have them stored in a nice, cool, dry place. So, so I have played them not too long ago when I was doing some of this. And they still play all right. So with the tapes is, you know, you always got to worry about the machine, chewing them up and all that. It's like, that's one of the problems with VCRs. I've had VCRs, not, you know, lately, and they're all, they don't, they stop playing. They don't work too good. I have one with the recorder. You play the tape and you can copy it on DVD. I did that. But then when the VCR part doesn't work, the DVD still works, though. So. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to it, you know. I, I guess anybody out there knows anybody that might be interested in trying to do this. Make a documentary. Look at, like I've been doing, look at the documentaries out there. And, and from that, maybe you can have an idea. Because actually they could be used. You know, some portions could be used for the ones out there. I mean, you have to get permission. You know. But I think they would allow it because it's the same business. They come out there now in the street. As I look at this, I don't even, I know I did that. I just don't know really why I was doing it. 
Maybe because I think, oh, I know why. Because I had caught in the snow between the cars, I was trying to make a space. So I was kind of pushing it across the street. So that way I didn't get blamed for blocking anybody in. So the next day it was still snowing, but the next day I didn't have too much there at all. <laughs> Nothing. It was a big pile. That pile I made was around for a little while. You know, this is in February. I think I mentioned Christmas Eve, but it wasn't. It was February 24th, not December. That was, it was February 24th. That's a difference. I think, yeah, I think I mentioned that. No, it's February 24th. 2005. Not December 24th, 2005. If we weren't there then, it couldn't be. Because I closed this, I think I closed the store in July of 2005, so it couldn't be. That's why I have to clear that up, I just realized that. I think I did mention Christmas Eve, but... You can see I have no decorations or nothing out there. Because if I had a tree out there, I think I, I might have it on this, this this video here if I get to that point. But, uh, no, this is February 24th. That's the confusion of the 24th. No, it, it definitely... So when you look at this, see, you can... I can... Because I had it marked. On the on the tape, February twenty fourth, two thousand five, not December twenty fourth, two thousand five, because a lot of the footage I have is at Christmas time, but this this wasn't. It looks like it with the snow and all. Yeah, I think I still had lights on the railing. Yes, yeah, so I'm pretty much like if anybody's interested in this. You can contact me because again I'll say I don't know how much I'm going to put in the description after this because I'm giving quite a description here you know but if someone partners with me well they're getting the benefit of my work you know my years of experience and all because I'm offering it to someone and be a partner with me so that someone can, can take this and work with me and we take this footage because if we get anybody interested, one of you know Netflix or somebody, you know PBS, because we're gonna give them all the tapes. Uh, it's like a hundred and some tapes. They can have it all and they can go through it. But if we make up enough of it, like like I've been doing, you know, on, online here, then maybe with that footage, they can see enough of it, knowing that all the tapes are dated and all. Then maybe. I might make a deal. I don't know the best deal for some, because someone's partnering with me. They're going to get the benefit of anything of this. Whatever happens, like if a, a network or something takes it and they make a documentary and it, it does well, we're going to get the benefits because if it's by doing it, not selling it outright, but by doing it on a royalty basis, and what it comes down to, someone partners with me and then the company who does it, we have to determine how what kind of deal we want to make. Either we, they get fifty percent, and we get fifty percent. We'd only get twenty-five each. And it can be worked all out because you never know. Because it actually, say this, any of this footage would have been used in a movie or in a commercial or anything. Every time it's played, you know we would get money. You know we're. You know how things are played over the whole United States and everywhere? You can get that. They hate to pass up the royalty pos you know, possibility. Because say we just sold it outright for a few thousand dollars and we split it. Okay. It, it's better than nothing. But then what happens later on? We could have been continuing to get money. So that's why I need a partner that, that might be familiar with that type of contacts and all. Deal. You know, deal. So even somebody might be a lawyer out there that wants to invest in something and do it and partner with me anybody out there but whoever I wouldn't wait too long for some whoever does it now I've been doing this for a while for months I've been you know posting all this 
if someone comes along and I, and I do make a deal with them, if someone else comes along, I won't be able to. You know, I don't want a conflict of interest, so that's an opportunity. Because once I actually, you know, start a deal with somebody, I'll have to see how it works out. If we don't get anywhere with it, then I'll have to say, try something else. Uh, I'm putting that, uh, like by doing this, I'm trying to put out some kind of a, I don't want to say it's a, by talking over all this, you can listen to it, as opposed to trying to read all the stuff that I've been typing, because I know I get carried away when I'm doing descriptions and all, especially about something like this. Like they say, a, a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, I can talk a thousand words over it pretty easy. Like I said, it's a lot easier for me to talk all this that I've been talking about here than for me to be shoveling the snow there. Remember, I'm out in the cold there. I'm out there for quite a while. Time is passing as I've been discussing this. It looks like I still, after all that, there's still snow on the ground, but it's still, you, you can see that pile. You can imagine. I'm shoveling from two doors the other direction, then to the video store, and then to the corner. Now the salt. See it? Because the salt, if I had to throw the salt in, it, it, the snow would have still stuck on top of it. But by me getting most of the, you know, the snow off the ground, then people start walking on that salt. So if any snow, the shovel later on, it comes up easy. Because the salt is the salt water. It's on the ground, so, well, coming to an end here, I think, I think I might have to say, if anybody's interested in working out a deal with me, well, I'll have my, my information to contact. It's going to be my email, basically, or maybe through one of these social media to contact me. Yeah, it's coming to it's a good way to end it, I guess, right here. I'll say, I hope... Everybody enjoyed this presentation. There's not too much to see watching somebody shovel snow. Like I said, I'd rather watch somebody shovel than actually doing it. So again, I, I appreciate your time and I look forward to maybe working with somebody. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. Maybe you can, we can work it out. Maybe someone out there might be interested in trying to do it, making up a, a documentary on their own. So if you are, well, I want to hear from you anyway. We can do it by email, you know, most of the contacts. So, again, I'd rather do it by email. Because remember, where I'm located, my, I'm on the East Coast. So it's not, and I know this goes all over, you know, in social media. So, but email, we could do it because I know all this. I've already had stuff I put on YouTube. And... And I've already emailed it to somebody. And all they do is take the link and they can they can get it. So all this footage that I have can be it can be emailed. I know that. I don't know that much about it. But it can be. Once I I know once I have it on what I've been doing is once I put it on I've been putting it on YouTube because you can write more description and more of the the footage, you know, like all this footage. It can go on YouTube. And then when I when I did this, you know, I'm doing this now. I know to I, I can delete it from my my uh, computer, so I'll have more memory. Because with all the stuff I've been recording, and then I'm I, I'm uploading it to YouTube. Then once I have it on YouTube, it seems to stay on there a while. As far as I know, I see things on YouTube that you know dated and all that that's on there for years. How many years, months? So I figured, rather than me trying to keep it in the history in my in my computer, so it, it it opens up the memory for me. Look at this. I guess this would be a good way to end it with me on there saying so long and slow motion, huh? Well, I always say that the video star. How you doing out there, folks? Remember, here at YouTube, we always put you first. Yeah, so, again, I really hope I can get something started on this. It's in no rush after all this time. It's just that I, I 
feel like I'm able to, I could deal with somebody now. So how do you like it so far, kids? Yeah, I think this is, I think, I keep saying I'm going to end it. I think right here would be a good way to do it. So again, uh, I enjoy talking with everybody out there. I don't know who may hear what I've been saying, but again, like I said, there's going to be, I'll, I'll have a description, you know, on, on this, you know, besides what I've been saying. What I've been saying is basically what's going to be in the description. There you are. I think that's a good way to... I'm still going to come back a little more, huh? I'm saying, please contact me, no matter what. Look at all this. Okay, I think that's a good way. Uh, yeah, a little more with this slow motion. All right. I'll give you a little more bonus footage here with this slow motion. Yeah, I was doing all kind of things. This just shows you what can be done in making a documentary, you know? Look at that. I don't think I could walk that slow if I if I tried to. You know, I walk slow now. I don't walk quite that slow. I think this is a good way to say, have a great day. You know, look forward to hearing from somebody real soon. I should call this snow time. Yeah, well, there's another scene real quick. That's when I had, this was at Christmas time. See the tree and everything? I'm not going to go back into this now. So again, hope you enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to hearing from somebody real soon. Have a blessed day.